very warm welcome to uh, Met's new Czech English News Bulletin. From now on, every Thursday and Sundays, we will be here with you with top stories mainly from Turkey, Kurdistan and the world. Aldar Khalil, a member of the Executive Council of the Western Kurdistan Democratic Social Movement, Tevzem, gave important messages in his interview. He says a federal system is a inevitable for Syria. Khalil remarked that need for real opposition groups participating in the talks. He said that if during the second round of talks Syria's principal democratic forces participate, then it could change the agenda of the conference. If they do not accept the democratic forces and Syria's real opposition at the conference, then there will be no real results. Khalil said that the goal of the second round of talks at Geneva is to form a temporary government. However, the existing parties do not have the forces to form such a government. If this temporary government is formed without consulting the Kurds, then we will not recognize it. Khalil expressed the desire of he and his colleagues that the fighting stop and that further tragedy be avoided. Khalil said also the meetings which is taking place in Geneva are working to bring the fighting back under control. Khalil pointed to the fact that with the exception of opening up a humanitarian aid corridor to homes, the first round of talks achieved nothing. He told that Geneva too did not produce any serious results. We consider this meeting to be a fiasco. No one word was spoken by the Kurds at the meeting. The Kurds who participated in the meeting within the Syrian opposition were completely ineffective. Khalil also criticized Western-supported Syrian National Coalition Group and Turkish policy in Syria. He said, Turkish Prime Minister Erdogan would become the Sultan of the Middle East. The parties wrapping themselves in Islam have not been successful in Syria. They have lost the initiative. This has also led to contradictions between the USA and Turkey on the topic of Syria. Turkey does not have the same influence in the region that it once had. Khalil also responds to the question, what kind of Syria will emerge after the war? He responded clearly and sharply. We want the fighting to stop immediately and all prisoners to be released. A temporary government and a constitutional assembly could be formed. It will be important that there is a recognition of the constitutional rights of the Kurds. A federal system for of all peoples and religious groups is now inevitable. PYD, including Arabs, Syriacs and Christians, with its local allies, supported establishment of three autonomous cantons last month in West Kurdistan, Rojava. Representative of GKRG's foreign relations, Fala Mustafa said, regarding the Rojava cantons, KRG has decided to support a decision made by all the Kurdish groups and parties and it won't deal with any unilateral decision. Mustafa's comments came just two days after a conference in Suleimani in which many Kurdish political parties and groups expressed their official support for cantons of West Kurdistan Rojava. All opposition parties, the Patriotic Union of Kurdistan, PUK, the Change Movement, Goran, and the Kurdistan Islamic Union, Yekirtu, have expressed official support for the local government of three cantons of Rojava. PYD co-chair Asya Abdullah told about declared cantons. Abdullah said that this is the project of the people, not one party or political group. The project of democratic autonomy is a democratic process and historically it has been a successful path. Everyone has the right to establish a democratic entity for their people in their country, no matter what others think. And Abdullah added, the autonomous cantons are based on the needs of the people and that the views of towns, villages and municipalities are seriously considered in the administrations. Clashes have been reported between the regime forces and the Al-Nusra front in southwest of the city of Al-Haqtasaka in West Kurdistan. According to the local sources, Al-Nusra Front affiliated to Al-Qaeda launched an attack on the city from southwestern neighborhoods at around 8 a.m. according to local time. Local sources reported that Al-Nusra forces have suffered heavy losses. On the other hand, in Aleppo, Syrian warplanes and helicopters hit the Maskena Hanano district of Aleppo with 15 barrel bombs. Local and hospital sources have been reported at least 10 people killed and many wounded. According to the local sources, reports the barrel bombing attack continues in Homs and Darawa.
A delegation of Human Rights Watch went to Kamishlo, West Kurdistan to visit the Democratic Society Movement, Tevdem officials. A delegation from Human Rights Watch visited Diplomatic Relations Office of the Democratic Society Movement, Tevdem, in Kamishlo. Delegation met the office manager, Dr. Abdul Karim Omar, and commission head, the Human Rights, Sinhari Barsum, and head of the Commission Justice, Abdul Hamid Mohammed Al Bakr, on Tuesday. Evin Kalo and Khalid Ibrahim, members of the Justice Commission, were also present at the meeting. The Human Rights delegation explained the purposes of their visit and said the reason of the visit to Rojava is to learn about institutions which has been formed before and after the announcement of democracy self-management and as well as the recent situation in Rojava. BDP Group Chairs Pravin Buldan and Idris Balukan and Ahmed PM Altantan organized a press conference in Parliament regarding the current states of the peace process and the future developments. Kurdish leader Abdullah Öcalan has made three proposals to enable the peace process to progress, calling for the negotiation stage to be initiated without delay. BDP MPs announced these proposals at a press conference in the Turkish Parliament. Here are the three proposals that Kurdish leader has put forward. Firstly, Mr. Öcalan wants the phase of negotiations initiated without delay. In order for the process to continue, the delegations representing the government should go to the island as soon as possible to discuss the main headings. Secondly, as Mr. Öcalan has highlighted, the legal steps regarding the status of the process, the agreement on the legal framework and the commission with eight headings should be passed by Parliament rapidly. Mr. Ojalan says that if steps are taken on these headings, he will be able to make appeals on many subjects. The government should take this appeal seriously and take the necessary steps without delay. Thirdly, pertaining to discussions with the delegation, he states clearly that this process is not one that will progress unilaterally with the state delegation. He has emphasized there need to be consultation delegations. Mr. Öcalan also considers that one visit a month is insufficient. He demands that delegations come weekly or, if necessary, on a daily basis. Buldan stressed that these steps were essential for the continuation of the process, adding that they had prepared a draft bill on negotiations that they will submit to Parliament. Since Kurdish leader Abdullah Öcalan captured with international conspiracy in 1999, what had happened in Imrala Island prison? What does Öcalan mean to Kurdish people and what was the effort for peace? All the answers in our news. around the world for remember 15th of February as the Black Day. Since 1999, the Kurdish community has come to acknowledge this date to be a day of national mourning. Those everyone does or say something to indicate they have not come to terms with abduction. Some wear all black, while others fast for a day or take to the streets and try different means of protesting. In fact, the Kurdish community was in a state of shock. Not a single political and social organization had anything to say or do. In the aftermath of Ojalan's forced exodus from Syria on 9th of October 1998, a total of 63 people ended their life by self-immolation, whether in prison, on the streets or city squares. Their slogan was, you cannot black our sun. When Ojalan was in Europe, he was aware of this heavy burden and those made a tremendous effort. He, before anything else, wanted to stop all death of Kurdish people's distinguished son and daughters. Those he made a written statement on 19th of November 1998 and called on the Kurdish people, I want an immediate and strict end to people's terminating their own lives by self-immolation. On the other hand, he was making an effort to channel the developments into a peaceful manner by putting forward the minimum requirements. In direct talks with the states, a new ceasefire is declared. 
However, following this ceasefire, a period called the International Plot by the Kurds is put into action. The very first things Öcalan did under the grim conditions of Imrala was to make a call. The very first call when his lawyer came to see him. This call was to end the scene of civil war. On the 2nd of August 1999, Öcalan calls on all armed guerrilla forces to withdraw from the border of the Turkey. Turkish army forces do not stop their military operations. Despite this, and the loss of more than 500 guerrillas, PKK fulfills the requirement of this call. Upon Öcalan's call on 1st of October 1999, the very first peace group made up of eight armed militants crosses the border to Turkey unarmed. Following this invo, on 29th of October 1999, eight political personality this time from Europe go to Turkey. The aim here is to pave the way for participation in a democratic process and a non-military solution. However, both groups are arrested and sentenced to long prison terms. In fact, in one of the many statements he had previously made, he summarizes the demands as follows. 1. The Kurdish identity should be placed under legal and constitutional protection. 2. Language and cultural rights must also be placed under legal protection. There should be no restriction placed on radio, TV broadcasting and print media. 3. Kurdish should be a language of education. 4. All obstacles before freedom of thought and association must be removed. 5. The law on political parties and elections should be democratized. 6. A democratic local governor's law should be enforced. 7. Village caste system and the illegitimate gangs nested within the state should be abolished. 8. The return of villagers who were forced to migrate should be assisted and a campaign for economic developments should be initiated. 9. A bill on social peace and democratic participation should be drafted and 3. Its enforcement the return of guerrilla forces, those in prison and all exiles who are overseas or who had to be migrated overseas should be ensured so they can be participating in democratic political life without any reservation. From 2008 to 2011, around 15 different meetings took place. Öcalan prepares the theoretical background and he bases for discussion with a document named The Roadmap. There he evaluates all the points that would be discussed by both sides. At the points of implementation, he prepares what is known in the public as protocols. Ever since 15th of February 1999, Ojalan was placed in an island prison which was designated and prepared for him, the Imral Island Prison. From the very first day, on the begins to spend 23 hours a day in a single person cell. In a cell that is continuously illuminated, he has nothing but three books at a time, a single channel radio, and at the times some censored newspapers. In all these years spent in prison, he reads more than 1,000 books brought to him by his lawyers. And he prepared his defense both for the cases filed against him and his own application at the European Court of Human Rights. A rough calculation indicates that he has handwritten more than 7,000 pages while preparing his defense and submissions. Öcalan described his own stance in one of the defense as follows. My name is Abdullah, which means the servant of God, but I was never able to wholeheartedly accept being a servant. I made myself believe that as much as having respect, no matter how harsh the divine powers clumps down on me, it was a tremendous virtue to defend the free human. I was reborn stronger than before when I compared with my first birth from my mother whom I disapprove of and later the efforts of a rebirth by the maternity which I never took seriously I took my third birth after all deaths very seriously and was delighted by it. In 2006, despite all oppression, 3.5 million people declare that they recognize him as their political representative. Thousands of meetings, campaigns, hunger strikes and other forms of protest actions have been conducted to show support for him. 
The main and common idea and a feeling of all these actions is that without freedom for Ujalan, there will be no resolution. The Kurdish society who has been Well, the anniversary of the capture of Kurdish leader Abdullah Öcalan is getting close. Kurds around the world are taking street and protesting the international conspiracy against Kurdish leader Abdullah Öcalan. One of these places which the big demo will take place is Strasbourg. Now joining me now, uh, Mr. Faik Yagazai, BDP representative of the Council of Europe. Good afternoon to you, Mr. Yagazai. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, Mr. Yagazay, to start with, I would like to ask you, what is the main purpose of this demonstration will take place on Saturday? Uh, you know, uh, our Kurdish leader was uh, captured by international uh, powers in 1999, and uh, there was a big uh, reaction from Kurdish people. Mm -hmm. Since then, every year, uh, there is a big uh, demonstration uh, to protest this international conspiracy against uh, Kurdish people and Kurdish leader, Mr. Öcalan. Mm -hmm. uh, all Kurdish people living in Europe uh, are uh, coming to Strasbourg to show their, uh, their support for the liberation of uh, Mr. Öcalan and to protest these big um, powers uh, who uh, captured the Kurdish leader and handed over to uh, Turkish authorities. Okay. Mr. Yagazay, how many people are you expecting? to participate in the demo and which countries? Uh, uh, every year there are about uh, 60, 70,000 uh, people gathering here mm -hmm. and this year uh, we expect more than uh, 70,000 people to come to Strasbourg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and uh, what was the purpose of this uh, international conspiracy against Kurdish leader of the Jalan? I would like to get your view about this as well, please. Uh, indeed, you know, um, uh, big powers wanted to change the, the, uh, the system of the uh, uh, Middle East mm -hmm. and they wanted to uh, set up their own uh, system in the uh, Middle East, but uh, the uh, ideology and the system of uh, PKK uh, and the Mr. Öcalan, the leader of the Kurdish people, uh, was a handicap before them uh, mm -hmm. to um, to make n new uh, reg uh, new uh, system in the uh, Middle East. So uh, they wanted to remove these uh, handicap before us. Mm -hmm. And when they forced uh, Mr. Öcalan to get out from uh, Middle East, he said that he could go to the mountains and uh, fight uh, more harshly against the uh, Turkish state and these other powers. But he uh, preferred to come to Europe and to search for a political solution, to find a political solution to the Kurdish uh, question. But unfortunately, when he came to Europe, he could not find any place uh, to, to stay, and uh, the big powers um, forced uh, any, other, any European countries who uh, even um, uh, wanted to... Uh, let him to stay, uh, but uh, he, they couldn't. And uh, at the end, uh, they have to they had to uh, get him out uh, of Europe. And then, uh, as we all know, he was uh, captured in Africa, in uh, Nairobi, uh, the capital of uh, Kenya. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, uh, last question: I would like to ask about Kurdish uh, leader Abdullah Öcalan's role in uh, Kurdish peace process. Uh, what is his uh, role? Uh, yeah, if, if, uh, if it is not Mr. Erdogan, nobody uh, could uh, find uh, a peaceful process uh, for this uh, question uh, mm -hmm. at the moment. Uh, there are a lot of reports, there are a lot of um, uh, 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 reports on the, on, the, uh, on the issue, but um, everybody agreed that the only person who can find a political solution for a Kurdish question and who can play its role on Kurdish side mm -hmm. uh, is Mr. Öcalan because he is the only person who can uh, control uh, the Kurdish movement, who can control the Kurdish uh, people and who uh, can uh, persuade them to, uh, uh, 
to agree for mm -hmm. a peaceful um, solution to the Kurdish question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Faik the BDP representative of the Council of Europe. Thanks for joining us. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thanks. Candidates of the Peace and Democracy Party BDP in the main Kurdish cities, Ahmed and other cities, are continuing their intense work prior to the local election to take place on 30th of March. HDP core president Sabah Tunjal took part in election work in Bursa. BDP Ahmed co-mayoral candidate Gültan Kışanak, accompanied by BDP Ahmed provincial executive Remzi Azizoğlu, visited people in the Çermik and Çüngüş districts. Kuşanak, who was received in the Çermik district by co-mayoral candidates Zuhal Odabaşı and Cemal Aydın, was also shown great interest by the people. Holding a speech addressing to the people who gathered in the central square of the district, Çermik co-mayoral candidate Cemal Aydın criticized that children, youth, women, handicapped and elders unfortunately had no place in the Çermik municipality. BDP Urfa Metropolitan Mayor Co-Chair candidate Osman Baydemir held a press meeting this morning and introduced his plans and project for Urfa. After attending the introduction of candidates in Hatay, HDP co-president Sebahat Tuncel took part in election work in Bursa. Tuncel said they had presented a new vision of the future to the peoples of Turkey. Sebahat Tuncel was in Bursa on Sunday, joining election campaigning. She first attended the introduction of candidates in the Osman Gazi district, after which she went to a public meeting at the BDP's Yildirim district office. Tuncel then attended a women's rally in the Yavuz Selim neighborhood and stressed that Turkey was in the midst of a political crisis and that the HDP had developed alternatives to the existing order. Speaking at the Peace and Democracy Party BDP Parliamentary Group meeting on Tuesday, Co-Chair Selhatin Demirtas criticised recent legal regulations on Internet. Selahattin Demirtaş criticized recent legal regulations on Internet and reminded the opposition of BDP throughout all the legislation process. Demirtaş also called the President of Turkey, Abdullah Gül, to veto the legislation indication, the legislation as a step of controlling media and attempt to silence the opposition in Turkey. Demirtaş, regarding to the peace process, said that even not a single legislation was made throughout the first year of the peace process we pursued. The peace process is on the edge of an end. There are promises given. Referring to Erdogan, you said we will bring peace and you said we are bound with the declaration of 21st of March. Well then, it has been almost one year, PKK guerrillas withdrawn and waiting out of the Turkish border. Will they wait there forever? Where is the legislation about to withdrawn? AKP is not concerned with the security of the peace process and the citizens. They do everything for their security. Every citizen who died in this war is valuable for us. Will this continue like that? We are doing our best to not to end the peace process. We are not supporting this process for the sake of Prime Minister. We are supporting the process for the freedom of the peoples and stop the death of young people. Demirtas, regarding the deadly ill prisoners, said, Almost every day we are receiving utterly worrisome and sad applications demands on deadly ill prisoners. We regard indifference of the government on the issue as de facto application of death penalty. The Arbakar Bar Association Children's Rights Center distributed a Blimwil Bafmlet in Turkish and Kurdish that aimed to inform children a list of contacts in case they were subject to violence. Turned down by officials for collaboration, the Arbakar Bar Association Children's Rights Center distributed a Blimwil pamphlet in Turkish and Kurdish that aimed to inform children a list of contacts in case they were subjected to violence. The pamphlet also aimed to create awareness among parents. We initially planned to distribute the pamphlets in public schools, but then it requires ministry consent. So instead, we distributed them on our own means, said Nahit Eren, coordinator at Children's Rights Center. We are trying to inform children on the following questions. What are children's rights? What rights do children have? Where can they apply in Diyarbakir if they are subjected to violence, he continued. We have printed around 6,000 pamphlets and we applied to the authorities in order to distribute them in public schools. However, the governor's office said we needed ministry approval after seeing that the pamphlets were both in Kurdish and Turkish. We didn't get a response for a long time and decided to go on our own way. 
Aaron said the frequent media coverage on violence against teenager girls and children brides motivated them to release an informative publication. The pamphlet covered a variety of issues including right to life, education, health, development, name and social security. It also aimed to convey the message that basic human rights like freedom of expression and create an association can no way be restricted. Reporters Sam Sfronitaris protested a man who controlled media with a video in YouTube. Let's watch the video together. For the second consecutive year, Turkey was the world's leading jailer of journalists, followed closely by Iran and China. CPG's risk list highlights 10 places where the space for free expression is shrinking. For 2013, CBG identified Egypt, Ecuador, Turkey and Syria among other countries and including the supranational platform of Substitutional because of the proud aeration of freedom on the internet. Where was press freedom under attack in 2012? It might not be where you think. It certainly came under assault in Syria, the world's deadliest country for journalists. But the press also suffered major setbacks in places like Brazil, where reporters are being murdered with impunity, and Turkey, where journalists are imprisoned by the dozen. For the first time, CPJ has compiled a risk list of countries where journalism suffered the greatest setbacks over the past year. We looked at six indicators, fatalities, impunity, imprisonments, censorship, restrictive laws, and journalists forced into exile. The results turned up a surprising mix of nations, failing states, yes, but also thriving democracies. Brazil's image as a regional leader has taken a hit because of anti-press violence, impunity, and a pattern of court-ordered online censorship. Coverage of political campaigns is an essential part of democracy, but not in Ecuador. There, election reporting is banned in the three months before a vote. Writing about political opposition groups is considered terrorism in Ethiopia where critical writers are jailed or forced to flee. Iran's leadership wants to shut its citizens off from the rest of the world. Authorities block whole swaths of the internet while jailing and intimidating critics. Pakistan says it wants to stop anti-press violence, but its inaction speaks louder than its words. Journalist murders go unsolved, and the death toll mounted in 2012. In Russia, press freedom was improving modestly until Vladimir Putin returned to office. Within weeks, new laws were passed to criminalize speech and restrict the internet. Somalia was already one of the deadliest places for the press. Then came 2012, when journalist murders hit a record high. As the Syrian regime of Bashar al-Assad clung to power, it imposed vast censorship and targeted journalists with violence and imprisonment. Turkish Prime Minister Erdogan says criticism is fine, but he won't tolerate being insulted. Journalists are jailed by the dozen in this strategically important nation. In Vietnam, the Communist Party wants international investors to believe it runs an open economy. But the party jails bloggers and strangles free expression on the internet. Some of the countries on the CPJ risk list are embroiled in conflict, 
and others are authoritarian. But several are democracies whose leaders say they stand for freedom. In 2012, they failed. This was it from us for tonight. We will see you on Sunday at the same time. Thanks for watching us.